train the muscles, not the joints. So welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. And today somebody asked me a pretty simple question. It's, it's a pretty elementary question, but hey, that's what I'm here for, is to answer questions of all sorts. Complicated ones, if I can, uh, most likely I can. The complicated ones, for sure, uh, but sometimes the simple ones. Uh, and sometimes you guys inherently know something, but I know that sometimes you're coming to me or maybe somebody else, some other expert in the industry, and you're saying, hey, that's a crunchy snow here. Maybe you're coming to some other person that's been established in this industry for a while and you're saying, okay, how do I put a language to something I know, but I don't quite understand why I know this, right? So somebody asked me about when is it okay to extend the joints, you know, to, to lock them out. And we all know, or, or at least most of you should know from watching this channel, that it's not good to lock out the joints when you're doing bench presses or squats. So this is not locked out. This is locked out. Don't lock out or anything where you are holding on to that force in the joint itself. So basically the force is threatening to snap the joint in the opposite direction in which it was intended to move, right? So for instance, I've referred to this all the time. There was that one video on Facebook that was going around where the girl was doing leg presses, but she locked her knees out and then they end up bending backwards. So it's like jujitsu, right? You don't want to jujitsu yourself. So obviously it's okay to lock the joints out when the force is moving in the opposite direction of what will kill the joint. So say I'm locking the elbows out in a tricep press down, but the force is not threatening to lock the joint out more so. The force is actually if anything, protecting the joint from over locking out, then it would be okay to lock out. The same sort of instance would be in the leg extension. You can lock the knee out in that case. The reason why is because the force is opposing the process of locking out the joint. You see what I'm saying? But in a squat, if you're locking out and the force is also going in the direction of locking out, you've got a recipe for disaster. At that point, the knee will bend backwards, you'll break something, whatever, right? Same thing with bench press, same thing with uh, shoulder press with the elbow, if the elbow's above the head and you're locking that joint out. So in my case, I can actually hyperextend the elbow, right? See that? I can hyperextend it. So obviously if I'm hyperextending the elbow and then the force is actually threatening to extend my elbow even more, then obviously that will be bad for the elbow joint. Another exercise that you definitely do not want to lock the elbows out in is the preacher curl. Because obviously when you lower the weight in the preacher curl, you're going towards the extended position of the elbow and the extended position of the elbow is where the elbow is in the most amount of danger, right? So that's why you see me in this shot here. I'll show you a clip. Pick, 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 pick. Pickety, pickety, pickety biceps. Pick, 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 pickety biceps. Pickety biceps. Pick this preacher, the plate always hits the rack every time. In this video, you see me keeping the arms bent at the bottom. Now, you might not have to keep them quite as bent. You work with what your body is telling you at the time. And obviously, when your elbow is, is extended, you don't want to arm bar yourself, like they say in jiu-jitsu, you know? That's how they break elbows. So it's okay to have the arms slightly bent, especially when the force is extremely aggressive, especially in the preacher curl, towards hyper-extending the elbow, right? So it's okay to not lock out there. You definitely do not want to lock out in that movement because that will definitely cause you elbow inflammation or in the worst case scenario, a tear or a sprain or something like that. Uh, yeah, so you can apply this in any sort of case, but if you're locking out and the force is threatening to lock it out even more, this will be a problem. So, okay, let's get a coffee now. I'm gonna go get something to drink because it's peeing rain out. And as you can see, the snow is out of the driveway now. The snow is out of the driveway. And yes, I didn't just wait for the rain to wash it away. I actually did shovel, all right? Even though none of you showed up, I did actually shovel the driveway. So, so don't be telling me the rain just washed it away, all right? It's not like I'm over some lazy, lazy or something. Well, sometimes I'm lazy, but not that lazy. Not that lazy. All right, let's get a coffee, all right? Let's go for a chat. Let's go for a chat now.
find some exercises are uh, more dangerous to the joints than others. And there are certain exercises you definitely do not want to lock out on. And, uh, and I mean absolute locking out. Almost locking out is different than locking out. Like relaxing as your joint is extended fully. That's, uh, that's never really a good idea when it comes down to compound movements or when the stress is threatening to overextend the joint, right? Remember, it's like jujitsu. If you overextend the joint too much, you, you snap it in half. And this is pretty talented. See, I'm stabilizing. I've got good stability muscles. I'm stabilizing on snow and ice as I'm filming. That's pretty good. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Pretty sky. Pretty sky. That's that's pretty. I'm liking that. Yeah. So yeah, I just had a coffee there, and now I'm gonna go to the gym and I will show you when not to lock the joints out with a couple different exercises there. So this is very obvious. I will show you with visuals. Hence the advantage of videography and doing a YouTube channel as opposed to just typing stuff out in book form. See, now the delts start to hit failure first. This keeps it on the back. This keeps it on the back. See, keeping those arms slightly bent keeps the tension on the back. If I straighten them, then the delt has to take the stress. I don't want that. If I want to train delts, maybe I want that, but I want to train the back. Tomorrow or a couple days from now, I'll be picking up my new truck. And the new truck will enable me to move about in the forest, unhindered. And I could go in search of Sasquatch or bears or maybe just a raccoon or something, I don't know. But maybe we'll, we'll find something like that. But yeah, I'll be able to go up on those trails, be able to take you around and, uh, and get nice, uh, nice little landscapes and stuff and do some photography to show you guys the landscapiness of the place that I live. I think you'll like that, right? Yeah. So stay tuned for that. I'll actually do a video of me uh, picking up my car and I'll talk about the TRD 4Runner truck that I'm getting. It's an off-road version or whatever. And I lifted it and everything so I don't get stuck. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm uh, taking you guys up in the forest with me. So I think that'll be fun. What do you think? You think it'll be fun? I think it'll be fun. Let's go see if the truck is there already. I'm, I'm gonna go cruise the parking lot. Let's go see. This is it.
So tomorrow I'm putting a lift kit in it. It's going to have lift kit and different tires and I'm waiting for some different rims, but you at least have the tires and the lift so that way when I go off road, I'm not going to have to worry about getting stuck so I can bring you guys up the logging roads and you can see some different stuff around Harrison Hot Springs and uh, around the Agassiz area. So it's going to be pretty neat. Yeah, nice color. Nice. It's nice. I found it. <laughs>